I'm not afraid of... Hello everyone, today I'm going to be talking about some modems and routers and which one is the right choice for you in 2015. Now there are so many products out there and new technology like 3G and 4G is out there which can be incorporated in your routers. So let's talk right about it and I'm going to break it down among five main steps. The first is what's your purpose? What are you going to use your modem or router for? How are you getting your internet in your modem slash router? Where exactly are you going to place it? How much range are you looking to get from that router? And the cost. So we'll start by first talking about the standards of the wireless. 02.11a came in September 1999 and works on 5 GHz of frequency band. Then came the version B which was released in September 1999 and works in 2.4 GHz of frequency band. Then came the G, which was released in June 2003, and this one works on 2.4 GHz of frequency band too. Then came the 802.11N, which was released in October 2009, and works on both 2.4 and 5 GHz of frequency band. Then came December 2012, the 802.11AC, which only works in 5 GHz of frequency band. So why are we talking about all of this? Some of versions are the future versions here. As you can see, AY and AX, they're going to come up in the future. So why are we talking about the frequency bands? What you need to know is that if you're using a 2.4 GHz frequency band modem or router for your wireless communication, it can go through thick walls. So if your house looks like this, then 2.4 GHz frequency band modem or router is good for you for wireless signal transmission because signals can easily go through it. There have been a lot of studies out there which prove that. But if you have thin walls, we suggest you use the 5 GHz router because it gives you more bandwidth but the problem is it doesn't go through thick walls. And the other important reason is most of the wireless products work on 2.4 GHz frequency band. So if you're using something 2.4 GHz band in an apartment building, for example this one, and there are people right over you, under you, over you, all over the place, and their frequency, they just, there's a lot of interference there. So you want to use 5 GHz frequency in th those scenarios. You can get a speed up to 1 Mbps on 802.11ac router as compared to 802.11n which gives you max speed of 450 mbps let's move on to the step two which is where are you going to get your internet connection from how is your isp your provider going to provide you that internet service so you want to buy the right modem in order to make the right modem choice there are two types generally speaking there are two types there might be more suppose you have xfinity or you have Warner cables, they're all cable providers. So you get your internet connection from a port that looks like this. That means you're looking for a cable modem. So always look for cable modem and wireless routers. Or you can buy them separately. Buy a separate cable modem and then buy a separate router, a general router. The port behind the modem will look like this and the cable will look like this. So look for only ADSL modems in that case. So once you know how are you going to get the internet connection, you can make the right selection for your modem and router. Remember, you can get a cable modem with inbuilt Wi-Fi, you can get an ADSL modem with inbuilt Wi-Fi. But I think the smarter choice is that you get a separate modem, a separate cable modem, or a separate ADSL modem, and then buy a router separately, like on top of my head right now. So now you can use that router with any of these because you can just plug in the Ethernet cable into your cable modem or ADSL even when you're switching places. Suppose your previous company was providing you with ADSL, you can use the same router. Your next company buys just a cable modem and plug in with your old router. It will work. Perfect. So how are you getting your internet? The last step is you should know if you don't have a cable modem or ADSL modem. Maybe you're getting a 3G, 4G dongle and you want to plug it into your router and get that wireless signal over a bigger range. So in 2015, there are a lot of routers out there which support 3G, 4G dongles. So you can just put it in the back of your modem and have internet all across your home. I'm going to talk about antennas. So where you want to send your wireless signal to or what's your kind of, how do you want to use it? 
So uh, there are two types of antennas, directional antennas and omnidirectional antennas. We're going to talk about directional antennas first. A directional antenna is intended for use when you want to broadcast your signal in a long hallway, corridor or on the highway. You want to give signals in just one particular direction. So that's when you want to use the directional antennas. Let's talk about the omnidirectional. This is an antenna which is generally given with your home devices or routers. The only thing to need to know about omnidirectional antennas is that it broadcasts the signal in all the direction except under it. So you have to keep it straight to get the Wi-Fi signals in all the directions. But remember, it won't give it right under it. Now there are so many routers which come with multiple omnidirectional antennas in it. That way they can give wireless signal in all the directions. But if you have one like this, try to keep it straight so you can get the wireless signals across your home. Alright guys, let's talk about the cost. Cost can be a really considering factor when you're buying a new modem or device. So what are some of the ways you can cut it? Well, you can cut the price on the software itself, not the hardware of course. Because there are some open source firmwares out there, you can put it in your modem and open up new features into it. TDWRT, OpenWRT are some of the features. They will open up a lot of features for you. But bear in mind, you have to be a little bit of technical person to do that. Because there are some complications and they are open source tools, so there is a little bit of pain when using them. So what are some of the examples you can use them for? Well, I have one which I use myself. So I was getting Xfinity free Wi-Fi in my neighborhood and I wanted to use it for my personal use using a secure channel. So what I did, I bought this modem right here. I flashed it with DDWRT and it, had, it was dual band. So I was able to capture Xfinity signals on one end and then create my own encrypted wireless channel over it. And then in the router itself, there's a feature where you can add a VPN too. So all my data was going on the Xfinity internet through a VPN and I was using it for free. So that's some of the custom things you can do with these firmwares. Apart from that, if you're just looking for a general router, I'm going to cut it down among five or six slabs of prices. And I'm going to give you guys four to five routers that I think are good for general use. So leave the comments below which router works best for you. Oh, and I'm the type of guy who will never settle down. Thirteen hundred MBPS.